وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ Those who perform zakat. Zakat in the Quran has multiple meanings. One meaning is sadaqat, which means charities that are not wajib. One meaning is zakat, which is wajib, like for example, zakat al-fitra. One meaning is khums, which is also wajib. For example, the ayah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ zakat وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ Indeed, your masters are Allah, the messenger, and those who, believers who give charity while they're in the state of rukur. No? Amir al-Mu'mini gave sadaqa, not zakat. But Allah refers to that sadaqa as what? Zakat. Which means zakat has a broader meaning in the Quran. Okay? Not only zakat. So, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ It means, don't only be selfish, thinking about myself. I'm going to study hard and become a lawyer. Okay, well, why? I ask some youth, why do you want to become a lawyer? Because I make good money. Okay. Or I want to study hard, become a doctor. Why? Make good money. I say to them, okay, you made good money, then what? خلاص, you've achieved your goal, you retire at the age of 30. That's it. You, you retired, خلاص, you're done. You made money now, you bought a nice car, bought a nice house. Let's say by 35, 40, you paid it all off. خلاص, that's it. Retire, that's it. You achieved your goal, that's it. Don't have shallow thinking. Think big. Think big. Think how can I share my ilm with the people, share my wealth with the people. You have some dentists, for example, who take time off one month in the year, two months in the year. They go to Iraq, they go to Pakistan, they go to India, they go to Brazil, they go to poor people, poor countries. Try to serve, help them, help them out. That's contributing. That's thinking outside the box. That's sharing, sharing. Once you share, as they say, sharing is caring. No, share. Share the ilm that Allah has given you. Share the wealth that Allah has given you. The other day there was a report from the United Nations, the population of Iraq today is about 37 million, approximately. Out of those 30, which is about the population of Canada, approximately. Approximately the population of Canada. Out of those 37 million, 4.5 million orphans. Yani almost, almost the population of Toronto. Yani imagine the whole population of Toronto is composed of orphans. Can you imagine? And these orphans don't have fathers. And it's not just about the money. This son or this child who lost his father, and he's, let's say, 10 years old, think of the trauma. His father was here today. Tomorrow, he's gone. خلاص. That's it. Finished. How is he going to you know, deal with the situation? So at least let's try to help these orphans. And how many orphans do we have globally from the followers of Ahlul Bayt? How many? Millions. Only in Iraq, we have 4.5 million. Think of other places, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, here, there, widows, orphans. Try to give, but give qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. Give qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. Help qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. You save one orphan, you help him educate, achieve, inshallah, a degree, then you've turned his life around. I don't know if you've been to Iraq or maybe India, Pakistan, and you see these orphans begging on the street. What future does this child have? Think about it. He's now maybe 10 years old. When he becomes 20, 30, what's he gonna, you know, what's gonna happen to his life? Whereas if you come to him, you take him to an organization, to a group that is reliable, trustworthy, and you say, listen, you take care of him, educate him, his clothing, whatever, and I will take care of it. I'll pay you the funds, and you'll make sure that this child grows to become, inshallah, with some bachelor degree, with some university degree then imagine you've just turned the life of this individual around. You've saved him. Allah made you a reason to save this child. That's what zakat does. It creates this love in the community, love in the society. A person one day came to me, said, Sheikh, I am sleeping in the shelter and my family members, you know, cousins, others, he says, they go to Hajj every single year. They go to ziyara every single year. They're spending thousands of dollars. Jazahumullahu khaira. But I'm sleeping in the shelter. I don't even have money to pay my rent. And we need to think of others. When you do think of others, you'll see how the people will love you. You'll create that love in the community. 
I'll tell you this one incident. It happened with, with, with me. A mu'min came to me and said, through the conversation, he didn't even tell me. Through the conversation, he said, I'm putting my house for sale. I asked him why. How come? He said, well, Sheikh, you know, job is not very good, and I can't afford the payments anymore. I looked at him. I said, okay, when you sell your house, what are you going to do? He says, I don't know. I'll go find some rent. I said, so you're going to sell the house that you're living in right now and go find some rent? How much do you need? He said, X amount of dollars, thousands of dollars. I said, okay, wait. Called some mu'mineen. Within a matter of a couple hours, they said, we'll give him the whole amount. And don't even tell him who it is. In fact, they don't even know who it is. Wallah. They did not even ask who it is. I said to them, there is a mu'min who's about to lose his house, so he's putting it up for sale. And this is in Canada. They said, khalas, tell him not to sell his house. We'll take care of his, mor his mortgage payments. They used to give the money to me. From me, it goes to his bank directly. He doesn't know who paid, and the payee doesn't know to whom it was paid. How many of such people do we have? That's really the essence of Iman. Iman is not just about standing for Salat. That's between you and Allah. But what about, what do people see of you? Your akhlaq. That's what they see of you. A group of people came to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam and they told him, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. They said, Ya ibn Rasulillah, we come from a community that is all your Shia. They love you. They follow you. They obey you. They do this. They do that. Imam Salam Ali told them, Okay, they pray, they do things. Okay, wonderful. He says, tell me, how do they deal with each other? Does the rich help the poor? Does the young look after the old? Do they look after each other? They said, no, Ibn Rasulullah, none of this. He says, then these are not my Shia. These are people who love me. They love us. They're our lovers. But don't say that you have come from a group of our Shia. Our Shia are people who care about each other. وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ Allah says, Mu'mineen, male and female believers, they are to be supporters of one another, taking care of one another. And we read in Ziyarat Ashura, which I recommend to the Mu'mineen to read every single day. Every day read Ziyarat Ashura. And inshallah, you'll see the fruit of Ziyarat Ashura, reading it every day in dunya before the akhirah. You have problems, you have issues, read Ziyarat Ashura. Health problems, read Ziyarat Ashura. It is very important to read Ziyarat Ashura. It brings a lot of barakah in your life. In Ziyarat Ashura, we read, we say, الَّذِي أَكْرَمَنِي بِمَعْرِفَتِكُمْ وَمَعْرِفَةِ أَوْلِيَائِكُمْ Allah, the one who has honored me through recognizing you, Ya Aba Abdullah, Ya Ahl al Bayt, I recognize you. Indeed, it is a blessing from Allah. It is an honor that we know who are Ahl al Bayt, alayhim salam, and inshallah we follow them. That's an honor. Not only is it an honor to recognize you and to recognize those who are the followers, your followers. Meaning, us knowing each other is an honor to us. Think about this, brothers and sisters. Is this how we deal with each other in the community? Or while we're having chai here, oh, did you see this person? Look at that person, look at him. Oh, she, look at this person. Oh, now this guy is standing for presidency? What? He can't even pay his, you know, he doesn't even own his house. How can he become the president? You know, unfortunately, we have this kind of mentality. We judge people based on how much their wealth is. We don't judge him based on his taqwa, on his deen, on his religion, on his iman. How good of a mu'mina she is, how much she helps, she contributes. And sometimes you don't even recognize, you don't even realize, but Allah brings the barakah in the lives of those who help. There was a lady from Kuwait. This lady used to build masajid without her family even knowing. She had a contact person in Iran. She would tell that contact, the trustworthy person, she tells him, go find the villages in Iran that don't have masajid. Poor people, small village. Tell me how much will it cost to build a masjid there, and I will send you the money. 
she built 14 masajids, 14. Then she died, nobody knew. One day, a person from Kuwait goes to visit Iran for Ziara, rents a vehicle, a car, and starts driving, you know, goes around from one city to another city. He stops in one of those cities, the small villages, on his way, he wants to pray, he goes to the masjid, he's wearing his Kuwaiti attire. He enters into the masjid, prays the salat, the imam of the masjid afterwards comes to him, salam alaikum, alaikum as salam, where do you come from? I'm from Kuwait. Oh, mashallah, did you know that the person who built this masjid is from Kuwait? She's a lady from Kuwait. He says, really? Oh, no, well, I didn't know that. You know, I, I came by by you know, coincidence, I was passing by. He says, yeah, this lady, she passed away, rahmatullah alayha. Her name was Fulana, so and so. He said, really? Hey, that's my relative. I know her. So he goes back to Kuwait. He contacts her children, this elderly lady. He said, did you know your mother had built Masajid in Iran? He said, no, Allah, we had no idea. Nobody knew, but Allah wanted to show the work. Why? Because it was done qurbatan ilallahi. So Allah wanted to show, is it a coincidence that this man from Kuwait happens to be passing by this masjid? Coincidence that the imam of the masjid knows that it is built by that lady? Coincidence that the imam approaches this man and talks to him? Allah wanted to show the amal al-salih. Even though the lady kept it a secret, but Allah wanted to show why it's qurbatan ilallahi ta'ala. She never told anyone. And later, her family recognized, after her death, that she had built 14 masjids. Now, how many people did she help through that? How many you know, communities were served by that? That's when you don't think about yourself. And that's what another meaning. So when you, inshallah, become successful, whatever you do as a mu'min, try to help other communities. Help them with your ilm, like that dentist who goes and travels. He has knowledge, he shares that knowledge with the people. Or those doctors, there are some doctors who travel and they share their knowledge. Engineers go, they build homes for the orphans. Jazakumullahu khaira, they're sharing ilm. People who pay, they say, we'll sponsor an orphan, we'll sponsor widows, we'll sponsor books, publications, we'll sponsor orphanages, schools, we'll do that. Noorun ala noor. That's the essence of the zakat which means you look after the community, the society, and not only there, even here. I know here they have a program called Out of the Cold. Out of the, Jazakumullah khaira, those people who look after that, who participate in that program. We have to look after the weak in the society. And sadaqat are acceptable for those who are non-Muslims. You can give sadaqah to a non-Muslim, and inshallah you'll get the ajr. So we can help, we can share, 